Hey everybody, welcome back to the Seattle Wilderness Family Channel. Welcome on this uh, October 10th, 2015. Uh, and you know what day it is? It's Saturday. And that means it's a weekend cook-off. <laughs> you know, it's October here in Seattle. October is usually wind, rain, and grays. And uh, we moved through our uh, Septembers, which was great weather. It's actually really warm outside, almost 70 degrees. We're having a real rain uh, Pacific system, system pass through like it always does this time of year, wind and rain. And my neighbors got these evergreen trees. I can hear stuff banging on the roof. Let's take a look at what the weather's doing outside. Now this is what I have to deal with. I have this all cleaned up. There are pine needles freaking everywhere. You can't hear. I don't know if you can see the rain, but it's coming down. I was already on the roof today cleaning the trash from all these trees. This sucker over here, I don't know if you can see that I ain't going out. It's the worst offender. I don't have the, my plastic from my new wood. It just blows the hell out of the plastic. Pretty soon that sucker's gonna lift up. Here comes another. I can hear the tops of the trees starting to go. Yeah. I swear for God. I thought it was great moving here with all these trees and stuff, but I've come to hate them. I wish they were firewood. Wish I could cut them down. Ah, uh, there's that. Two years ago, firewood still ready to burn this season. Oh, man. You know what? This is bull crap, Jack. And that's why it's a good day for a gumbo, you know? Shrimp and sausage gumbo. Now, we're Pacific Northwest. Uh, I'm gonna do it Cajun style, Louisiana style, you know, the bayou. Uh, I've got a couple of friends uh, who've got cooking channels, JB, Joe, Southern Coastal Cooking. they got some real good recipes. So we're going to do a combination of theirs, Pacific Northwest style. And uh, <clears throat> let's see what our ingredients are, okay? <laughs> Look at what I got. Uh, I went down to B and E meats. B and E meats. Now you open the bay, you can smell this. Wow, look at this. Andouille sausage. Regular Cajun sausage made right here in the Pacific Northwest. Can't get no better than that when you're making a gumbo and you're using some shrimps. We're putting in some crab a little bit. And you know what? I'm going to start getting things out get it laid out on the counter. Uh, by then, I'm going to uh, head over to the grocery store, a couple of things to buy for this recipe, and uh, I'll just see you back here in a minute. Dot com. Well, I'm welcoming myself back to this great night for gumbo here in Seattle. And we're going to make this certified Cajun, okay? Uh, went out and did some shopping, got the things that we needed. Also, did a few chores around the house after coffee this morning, which is always around noon on Saturday. And uh, there's a number of things I've gotten together. I'm not going to have anybody on the camera tonight. I'm going to be doing that myself. Uh, so bear with me as I sort through that. Uh, let's take a look at a couple of things that's going to go in this gumbo. This is going to be a shrimp and sausage gumbo. And we're starting with one pound of what I got, tiger shrimp. See, tiger shrimp, they got those black lines on them. Shells are quite distinctive. Tiger shrimp, one pound, okay? I got another pound of what I just call some damn shrimp. These still got their Looks like they still got their coatings on it. It's got his tail, got his shell. I take this shrimp, and they're already split and deveined. 
I take my shrimp and I pinch that bad boy. And that pulls that tail off and then I just peel it open. I'm trying not to do this and spill crap on the floor. It goes just about like that. I know it's hard to see, I drop some ice. So I've got another pound of that to do. But you know what we're going to do? I'm going to make a roux. And I'm going to make a roux today on the stove. And uh, to make the roux for this, it's going to feed the three of us for two days. I'm going to take one cup plus of all-purpose flour. Don't use weird flour that's got other stuff in it, baking flour. All-purpose flour, just flour, okay? And one cup plus a little bit of vegetable oil. I don't like to use butter. Some small recipes I might use 50-50 oil and butter, but you know what happens? Man, I get that heartburn, that burf o -matic jack. Don't want that tonight. So, one cup plus, one cup plus flour oil on tonight. I'm gonna move to the stove. My camera girl has had a busy day she, right now she's asleep on the couch she was out with friends last night over across the sound uh, one of the islands with friends with girlfriends had a good time got back this morning she did a big drive uh, and you know she's a year new new driver for a year Melly did a great job drove lots of miles and really took care of things she's dosed out because she just went and did three plus hours of ballet nutcracker is coming up for this December and don't look at that TV back behind me. Um, so we're giving her a break. Uh, Mrs. M is over here behind me cutting up some things. And we'll see what she's cutting up here in just a moment. <laughs> I'm sure. Okay, my bro. I got my Circulon pan. I love this pan. Uh, I manage apartment buildings for my employer, among other things. Um, and this new pot was left when they moved down, it got awesome, you know. I come across it, it's got a great lid. I don't know if we're using that today, but we're gonna go our one cup flour. I haven't done the plus yet. One cup of oil, one cup of herb. Alrighty, I had to go over there and do it because you know I'm doing this all myself. This is the one cup plus of vegetable oil and hey, if you're saying, hey, Super K, that's too much oil, that ain't healthy. Well, you know what? I don't care. I made it to 60 years old. I eat healthy. Tastes like vegetable. But you know what? This stuff, I'm eating. And we're gonna have a massive salad alongside with this. Not to mention a couple other things. All right, I gotta get a little extra flour. Okay, so my, there's my little extra. I call that maybe a quarter cup. That's just the way I like it. Um, this roux will thicken four to six cups of stock, depending upon how dark you make your roux. And we're gonna make this about like a nice Nestle's quick chocolate milk. Oh, I'm gonna crank the heat. And especially when you're doing it this way, you can do it in a microwave and nuke that sucker. But when, we're gonna have to keep this busy, keep it going, keep it going with the spoon. Uh, matter of fact, I better get that right now. This is my roux spoon. We have been cooking with this bad boy for a little while. I'm trying to get a little color on that. Yeah, see that's been burned up and stuff and cooked out. So just gonna work that down, work all that oil together. Let me see if I can get you in closer. There we go. Make a little adjustment on the tripod. Oh yeah. All right, we're just gonna slowly mix that up. Adjust the heat. I want to mix this in thoroughly before I get the heat on it and get it all broken down. All that, 
all of that uh, flour here mixed in real well. And throw, we don't want any burnt chunks of flour. As it heats, it'll begin to brown, but not yet, you know. All right, so I've got that all real nicely mixed together. And I surely can't wait for this. So we got some special certified Cajun things to add to this. Let's get the heat going. Well, it's already begun to bubble up in here, you know. I don't want it too fast. Just take a little bit of time. Now, you got to remember, don't get this on you. Don't splash it on you. Take care of what you're doing because that's like Cajun napalm. You get that on you, it ain't coming off, and you're going to burn. It's going to leave a scar, and you're going to be sorry you did that. So I'm just going to keep gently spinning this around for a little while. You know, this is a whole lot of ruin. Get that ruin. Yeah, because if you get it on you, Jack, I surely ain't good on my southern cooking friends. JB. Yeah, Louisiana Cajun Specialties. Or Louisiana Cajun Recipes. Joe. Down in Mississippi. K uh, southern Coastal Cooking. They got some real good videos. Try to find that J JB now. He is your standard Foghorn Lake or man. I just love this guy. He's a good dude. Got a lot of good videos. A lot of good know-how too. Now you can see after about 10, 12 minutes or so, it ain't changed much. So I just up the heat a little bit and uh, Always stirring, always stirring. It's uh, crazy weather here today. Definitely had our wind, had our rain, very, very much Pacific Northwest. Depending on where you're at, this time of year, in this part where it's cooled down, you got to run your furnace. This is a good meal. You know, it's in the comfort food. Yeah, I'm, I'm saying, any potatoes this and that. This is, we are going to serve this with rice. Now let's just see, let this work a little while. Now we're into this about 20 minutes so you can see it's starting to get a little color to it. It's not blonde anymore and it's starting to smell nutty. It's an interesting aroma but don't stop because if you do it's going to burn. Well, it's been 20 minutes. Give it a few more minutes. Well, now check it out. It's definitely caramel color. I'm pushing 25 minutes right now. I ain't stop stirring. I can turn my heat off though, because I'm gonna get ready and uh, be time for the Trinity going in next. Oh man, the Trinity. Can't say enough about that. We'll just keep stirring it just a few more minutes and put the next item in. Well, now Mrs. M did a great job. We got a cup of green pepper, cup of diced celery, and the other thing is that onion. And we buy it chopped frozen because my eyes will blow up. Other thing you're gonna need in this is some green pepper diced up. I'm using chicken stock, I might not be using uh, seafood stock, but that's what we're going to do with that. It gives it a nice flavor. Uh, this is probably more than I'm going to use. This is four cups. Uh, I'll use a half of that. We're going to do a six cup uh, gumbo here. So these are my dry ingredients going to put in soon. We got thyme, bay leaf, oregano. We've got pure ground gumbo filet. That's going to go on at the very end. I got my Cajun seasoning. Oh, let's get that Cajun seasoning. There's the ground gumbo filet. Oh, dude, I'm sorry, because see, I'm working this alone. It's very hard, you know? That's okay. Well, anyways. That piece so perfect today. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it. Our filet, Cajun seasoning. And I picked this up. This here is 
Tony. I love the name Tony. And he, he looks like his name is Crack. He's a strange looking dude here. And it's an original Creole seasoning. It goes pretty much good on everything. No salt in that. I got my basil here. That's uh, we, we buzz that up. And these are all my dry ingredients. Uh, let's get over back to the stove and get that Trinity rolling. All right, look at here. That dark, nice chocolate looking stuff. And we're gonna cook this. Uh, we're gonna cook this Trinity, which is, again, celery, bell pepper, green, and onion. And there's our frozen onion. I don't like to blow my eyes up. And that's, you know, that's good enough for the three of us. It's got another, and now we're going to work this all in also. I'll get to that. So we're just going to work this on in. That's all cold and already begins to bind up here. And, and that's very normal for when you're working with a roux of this nice color. We didn't sweat this one down, you know, in oil. I'm telling you though, this roux, I'm telling you, that's like 350 degrees. The heat coming off this onto my chest, that's why you do not want to get this on you. Do not get it on your skin. You can get it on your clothes, as far as I'm concerned. I just brought the heat back up medium. Now I'm gonna fire this down a little bit. We're good. We're good on that. And just cook this down a little while. Sorry about that, Jack. Well, in general, it's our it's back hissing again. I got my uh, almost. It's it's a number or two over medium. I'm gonna pull this off the heat and put my stock in. Now stock, you want to put in cold. Don't put no hot liquid in. You're going to get that a clump up and you'll never fix it after all this time. Just be patient. You know, pouring it in is pouring it in. It, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. I'd be squeeze the box and get that stuff out quick. Whoa! It made a hell of a noise. Well, this is free range chicken stock. Back over onto the heat. Jack. Looky here. Back on the heat. Start putting this together. You know, after you add that trinity, what's going to happen is it's going to stop that cooking process of that roux. So I'm going to get a nice brown roux. Wow. This is going to be good. A oh, yum. <laughs> so we're going to throw in two pounds of shrimp into this after a while. And you know, the second night usually is the best because the shrimp's going to have some time to suck up that suck up all that gravy we're making here. That's what I'm making. And as this brings up the heat, then we're going to be good. I'm going to have to put a little bit more liquid in here. And if I have to adjust it, if it's a little too thin, uh, I can always add some of my little wonder flour to this. At the end, it's starting to feel like it's doing a little something there, Jack. Now with this stuff, says I got about seven days. Once I, now that ought to be good. I'm gonna make me a gravy. I don't want to come up. Keep me some of it so it don't thicken too much. And if it's too thick, I just work it thin. And as it comes up to heat, we're gonna get up to speed. And right, I'll just keep working this. You keep sitting there watching. All right, so she boiling now, and. I don't have too much of a gravy yet, so I'm gonna add a little more pre-made roux that I got. 
it's time for our dry ingredients. Thyme, oregano, bay leaves, my Cajun seasoning, my, and my paprika, and that just all goes in now. And in a moment, I got some really important thing to put in as I turn this down to simmer. Wow, smell coming off of this, really good something. There's a lot yet left to do, but all the hard work was done. We're just gonna start throwing our things back in here. And you can see the boiling's coming down, going down. Let this cook a little bit. Another thing I didn't put in, uh, and this is my Creole seasoning here. Uh, because we got all that Hungarian paprika we brought back from Hungary, I like to put a little extra in. Makes a little deeper color, deepens the flavor. And now I'm going to make this certified Cajun. Get these tomatoes put in. All right, rock on here with my. These just that blow me up almost. Petite diced. I don't know what the hell they are. <laughs> yeah, those are my tomatoes. I could put another one in there. See, and all this, all this stuff I'm putting in that changes it. It keeps thinning it down a little more. I got my pre-made roux on the side and I'm gonna let this cook for a bit. There's a lot of cooking. It's gonna be like 30 minutes. I'm just gonna have to let this cook and start the movie for tonight. We'll get to that in a moment. All right, and here's the real deal now, everyone. Now you can hear me after washing the dishes. Here it is. Zatarans, crawfish, shrimp, crab boil. And uh, this is not the liquid. This is a dried pack. And I'm telling you, what you're gonna do, you ain't gonna wanna put much in. I'm gonna put a teaspoon of this in that whole pot because uh, it's loaded with pepper, cayenne pepper. So it's gonna boost this thing a little bit, make it another layer of flavor. But uh, I don't wanna blow my backside out, you know what I'm saying? So now that I've got all of the uh, ingredients in, all that nice chopped up green onion. It's gonna be another half hour before I'm eating this. Huh? You know what I think it's time for? <laughs> I think it's time for some sausage. It's so looking so good. Mrs. W is gonna put a handful of that parsley in there. Very good. Oh, that's beautiful. I'll put the rest in the bag with olive oil. Beautiful. I get a little sprinkle for the top <laughs> when we're done. Hey, we just keep adding layer after layer after layer of this. You know, a gumbo is everything you got in, left over in your cupboards. You want to use chicken? That's fine. Crawfish? That's fine. You ain't gonna find it much of it up here unless you're shipping it in. And you can do that. I'm sure you can find it online. Bring it up there from the south. Ja, JB? I right, forget about it. I can see those tomatoes in there yet to break down. I call it a top's worth. All right, Francois, this ain't just some sausage from Johannesburg or Johnsonville, something like that. This is certified Cajun and Dewey sausage. Let's, you know, get a little bit of that drop down in there. Let that get it all, it already cooked, but it's just gonna add another layer of flavor. Another layer of flavor. And there's gonna be only two other items. Is this gonna cook now? You know, the last 15 minutes, I think I'm gonna put in our shrimp and I got some crab. Not a whole crab, just crab. Just crab meat. Wow. Ain't nothing wrong with this. You know. I'm gonna just taste it. At this point, I already at tasted it a minute ago and needed a little seasoning salt. It's freaky good. I can basically taste just about everything. Got that sausage in there. 
that top on and let it do its thing. Right, Jack? Right. So I'm just putting in what I call the stupid crab and the shrimp. Give me my special frozen shrimp package out. I'm calling my, my crab. I've got my, my lump pieces of crab here. Put that I'll put up one in there. Uh -huh. Beautiful. Right? And by the tomorrow, that crab is going to be in a world of hurt. It's going to be in a, in a whole bad situation. And there ain't nothing wrong with two pound of shrimp going in. I gotta double check because Mrs. M found some shell in there. Since I got one eyeball that works and one eye that don't, I gotta be dang careful. And these shrimp are gonna drop off a little liquid. Dang, dude. Now you're probably thinking while I'm making this, now Kyle, how can you afford to make that? Well, you know what? I can't. <laughs> but what I can do is budget real well so I get a little extra money each payday. And then we can kick off something really good like this. Now, the last time, and if you look on the YouTube channel, you're watching Seattle Warners, you'll find our T-bone steak. I don't remember what date that was, but it surely wasn't recently. You know, every couple, well, couple of months, we get to put together something seriously good and I got this down on you know between low and medium let's check out this brother see what that shrimp boil did now wow it is absolutely perfect mrs. M's over there working on the rice put it to sleep for a few minutes <laughs> oh, look who you got back in your face it's me super K super K Z killer Z for zombie killer you can find me out there on Xbox live if I'm playing zombie or I'm playing GTA 5 uh, I'm a gamer oh you know thumbs the thumbs know how to work I'm gonna show you what we got this is banging They were just fresh, sweating in the bag. <laughs> Do that, that French loaf, man? man? That's some badass stuff, Jack. You gotta have a nice French bread. Look at that. Look what. Look what happened. This one. Mrs. M on the way home from the grocery store was ripping and tearing, biting up off of that thing. Uh, it got a good crust on it. Gonna need some slices of this to be dipping in that gravy. You know, that's how you do it. French bread, Jack. I'm going over here to the pot because I can't stand the suspense. Dip that spoon. Tap, tap, tap. Where's my, where's my rag? It's over here. Look at that. Boy, that's some work keeping that over there now. <laughs> I'm telling you, that is a good sauce. Actually, it ain't sauce. That stuff's gravy, man. I ain't gonna ban me out this video. Man, there are so many different layers of flavor, different this and that. You saw everything that went in there. And there's just a little bit of heat. I'm mean, enough. <laughs> a little bit of heat on my backside of my neck burning up, Jack. No, it's good. I was just moving this all around man you gotta look at this I mean you can see the sausage the crab chunks shrimp I was doing this man <sighs> this is what gumbo is man I got goosebumps I'm so excited about it much like that t-bone steak a few months ago I'm not gonna lick that spoon on camera I'm gonna do it all by myself <laughs> 
So I banged this up. Now you're gonna, gonna have that nice bread. Look at the insides, nice holes and all. So it rolls up real good. Gumbo filet just waiting for that when that rice is done. I can't wait. Thought we'd just take a little look. Mrs. M's kicking it there with her iPad watching something. There's our dancer. She busy girl sleeping on her super big. God damn, what is that animal? Huh, that ain't just little teddy bear, that's big bear. Jack, they're kicking it. I think part of the excitement about gumbo is this waiting. It is all this, well, I've been into it an hour and 20 minute, getting this whole thing ready. There's something about letting it cook, letting all those spices and herbs and flavors to build upon each other and get hooked together. Um, it's much like waiting for Christmas presents, waiting to open them. You know, uh, you know, I, I might be my age, but I'm still <laughs> pretty much get really excited about simple things these days. I keep my life real simple. I, I don't do, go too far out in my mind. I stay right here connected in the room that I am at, at 7.32. Seattle at 7 o'clock is dark this time of year, October 10th, 2015. Um... Otherwise, this cannot get ready too fast, right, Jack? Or I'm waiting on Mr. Lee. Where's Mr. Lee? We got a movie tonight. It's called 12 Monkeys. And, you know, we just watched uh, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes or uh, s s the second number two of Planet of the Apes. But this 12 Monkeys, I got a feeling it's a, a whole group of monkeys gone haywire or something like that. 12 monkeys, I don't know what it's about, but I'm surely, surely thinking it's chimpanzees or some sort of squirrel monkey or some crazy monkey. Hopefully he ain't doing something offensive, you know. Monkeys do offensive stuff. They throw poo. They uh, do terrible things. Piss on you. <laughs> but, you know, if there's at least 12 monkeys, it's going to be a hell of a mess. <laughs> I can't imagine. It's going to be a fun movie. We're going to sit in the family room. Uh, the Wormwoods. If you don't know who the Wormwood style is, the Worm Wormwood family, you gotta watch. Uh, Marty, what's that? What's that movie? Uh, Matilda. Uh, that's a great kids movie, and I love all those Disney, uh, Pixar, you name it, kind of movie. Uh, but uh, the Wormwoods is something else. Danny DeVito plays a real amazing <laughs> actor. He plays that car salesman, and he's got hot parts. So you can do that. I think it's been a pretty good day. Got some things organized. We do one a step at a time. Uh, if you're wondering why I do this, I do it because I like to. You know, there are a lot of people I've been watched cooking channels have did a lot of influencing my life, and uh, I've come a long, long way uh, to what I used to be. I was a no good, down and out nobody. And lost everything, trashed up one family, uh, and over the years, from uh, not being in a negative lifestyle, I've uh, overcome lots of stuff. And, and at my age today, I just live simply. Life's pretty simple. I don't have no great aspirations, aspirations to be uh, the president of the United States, uh, the president of uh, any 12-step program, uh, which I still attend. Uh, my meetings per week. Um, I volunteer my time and uh, I do more of the big picture. My world isn't centered around Kyle. It's centered around the big picture, who I can help, where can I be of service each day. Uh, I can't think of, there wasn't somebody to, oh, a, a, a nice, nice woman uh, riding a, a scooter chair at the grocery store, and, you know, was friendly to her. If I've just got a nice word for someone, a good positive comment, uh, or if I'm as silly as Haywire as you know how I am, uh, you know, it lightens life. People are way too serious and, and, and I can fall into that. But these days I try to keep life simple and just live right at the moment because there isn't anything going on other than right here at the moment while I'm talking to you while I'm sharing a little bit of who uh, Super K is. I ain't so super, I'm just K, you know, Agent K. That's me today, okay? See?
K O K O K O K K K O K. Well, I would just woke little M Warner up, my sweet daughter, getting ready to put some of this together. I'm probably not going to show you me eating out of my bowl or anything like that. You know what it looks like to put food in your mouth and chew and uh, munch, and but I might. Only no, we only have to watch a few more minutes of this stupid thing. <laughs> I've had a good time making this recipe for you and I'm excited to make it. I used to make a gumbo years ago, but it wasn't anything like this. It wasn't a roux. I used okra to thicken it up. Okra is an amazing little gizmo. Uh, it's still boiling there. Um, got our fancy little plates. Maybe we'll take a little look at that, huh? Jack. Oh, the cutie little plate, yeah. Rice is done, so let's do it up. Well, got a little problem on this front. Rice cooker didn't turn on. What? Plugged in, put the rice and stuff and water in the rice cooker. Guess what? Forgot to push the button. <laughs> hey, it's Saturday, man. Hey, are we perfect? I don't think so. <laughs> Looky here. <laughs> Jack. All right, so Mrs. M, pardon me, put the rice down. Let's see if this oh dude like everything new it got a haywire top ain't got a shaker top we put a little bit of the filet I don't know what the hell filet is but it's something if it comes if if you want it certified I want it certified Oh, I'm so ready for this. Wow. Oh, man. Shoot. Yeah, that's what... Yeah. It has got so much goodness in it. Mm. It's loaded with you-know-what. We got some nice French bread here. Oh, this is gonna be a nice leftover. <laughs> <laughs> Be eating this for days. Let's see if Melanie wants that like that. Okay. Melanie, how many shrimps you want? You want eight, five, six, seven, eight? Got any more shrimps? There's a lot of meat in oh, there. Oh, that's Melanie's. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> she has to be served first. Hey, that's it. Okay. I'm giving you a spoon and a fork because it's got some nice gravy. I don't see your oh your plate is there. You're gonna have you can it. Serve, yeah, you serve it. While the people sit and watch the stove. Okay, since we got my daughter M. Now we got mom in. Oh, man, they should have put a shaker top on that, don't you think? Do we have? I think no, I have. We ain't got. You're weaving and bobbing like a, like a, like a cobble man. <clears throat> All right, let's watch <laughs> blow this plate up now. That's and don't forget to help yourself. Mmm, yum. There is so much goodness in that. I want sausage. Yes! I'm tripping on a poor fool that I am. I got me a bowl and it's going to fly out tomorrow. Okay, this is it. I'm going to sit down now. Good night. Good night. Okay, Mr. Lee. Now you got the cook prepping his food. A little gumbo filet top of my rice. I'm not afraid to hurt myself. I always do when I eat. I've already heard from peanut gallery over there that it's heavenly. It, oh, one thing we did do this time is make sure that it was overly stuffed with 
whatever it is. I ain't seen no shrimps. There's two shrimps. Got me some sausage, got me some crab. You know I mean? A crab. There's a couple of shrimp. You know, I'm gonna have to dig up me some shrimp. Uh, got me some gravy. Another piece of crab. I've heard it's absolutely heavenly. So, since that comment came about, I'm gonna have to go on. on on uh, on camera bite taste test but check what's in the oven chocolate chip cookies <laughs> hey we had to do it you know all right let's take a look at a bite Holy I was also told that it's starting to get spicy <laughs> well that happens these days now you've seen the plate I'll try a little gravy right out of it Gravy on camera. Dude. Dude. Seafood flavor. Everything flavor. Drip it on your hand. You lick your hand. A little warmth. Not just from the heat of the, uh, the stove heat. That crab boils in there, Jack. Now we got authentic Cajun gumbo. I call it probably a lot like New Orleans. I understand there's a whole lot of recipes. Person down the street, if they're making gumbo, is different. And I don't think the guy behind me he does anything other than, you know, I'm gonna keep from saying anything negative about that because I see it negative, it comes back on me. Listen. Appreciate you being at the Seattle Warner's channel for a uh, fall, real fall, October wet, windy Seattle day. Having a great gumbo today. Have a few uh, cookies when it's all over. And uh, we got this 12 monkeys already started. I ain't seen one monkey, but I seen Bruce Willis. We'll see what the movie's about. Thanks again for coming to the Seattle Warner's family channel. That. Take care. Don't forget, there's a thumbs up. If you want to click that, that's great. And if you haven't subbed our channel, do that. Hit the subscribe. Tell your friends, neighbors, and family members all about it. That there's this crazy white-haired fool up in, <laughs> up in Seattle. He's a fool. And he's a fool. All right. I'm going to go eat. And we're going to be a sayonara here in just a few minutes. You want to see the <laughs> Finished my whole plate. We're watching that 12 monkeys. I ain't seen one monkey yet. Look at here. <laughs> Melanie got a little bit of left over. <laughs> I'm gonna eat it now. <laughs> and the cookies is done. Working the camera backwards. Jack. For you, it's just another video clip, but uh, we're passing out cookies. Passing out cookies. One, two. That's for Mrs. M. Hold on. I gotta go deliver it. You know what? Good husband takes care of the family, yeah, Jack? I also, hey, the 12 monkeys, I seen a monkey. They had it in a cage. <laughs> you know, I shouldn't eat nothing else. One cookie ain't gonna hurt nothing. <laughs> what? I used to be Mr. Internetter. You, I don't know where you can find me. Where's Mr. Internetter at? Melanie? <laughs> How's it going, everyone? <laughs> you know what? I never seen a monkey, but I seen twelve of them. <laughs> twelve monkeys never showed up. Just wanted to thank you for showing up to the Seattle Warner's family channel. It was a great gumbo. Thanks for watching.
thank you for watching us goodbye short and thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this gumbo meal you should definitely make it for yourself i'll see you guys next time bye Baby, make me love you.